Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines overnight, a man is fighting for his life after being hit by a vehicle while crossing a street. We'll have the latest on his condition. The Department of Homeland Security has identified nearly 100 coronavirus hotspots around the country. I'm Alex Brashay in Washington, coming up what that means for schools trying to reopen this fall. Taking a look outside with live cam, it's 77 degrees. It's muggy outside, and we've enjoyed a bit of cooler temp, somewhat cooler temperatures. But will that trend continue the weekend? Mike will let us know. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is July 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Yesterday, I had a nice uh, 5, 5 p.m., 4 p.m. shower, and I mm -hmm. got to sit on my porch and enjoy it. Yeah, I noticed gusty conditions out there. Got dark and then a whole lot of nothing up on part of my part of the north side, Mike Osterhage. Same thing at the airport. Yeah. A lot of nothing. Trace mm -hmm. of rain officially, so basically technically nothing out there at the airport. I got a couple of nice showers, and yeah, those uh, gust fronts moved on through here. Uh, temperatures dropped down a good 10, 15 degrees as that moved on through. The, those little outflow boundaries from some of those storms that moved in here from the, uh, the southeast. And uh, well, now all that, as this loops back on through about uh, 12 hours, and you can see some of those storms that moved up in there. The, the heart of that or what brought us some of that rain, that little upper level uh, spin that is continuing to work its way off to the south and west and kind of moving on out of here and it's pretty much taking any rain chances with it. Unfortunately, we're at 77 degrees right now. Normal low is 75. So in the ballpark, humidity is OK again this morning and boy, mold really went up 21,600 on yesterday's count and throughout the rest of today, 90 at noon and Everything has been kind of trending on the warm side because four of the storms even moved on through here. We made it up into the upper 90s yesterday, and I think we've, uh, I think it's inevitable. We're going to be back up right around 100 again today as well as tomorrow. We're still looking at some better rain chances coming in here, uh, probably late tomorrow night, early in the day on Saturday, and we'll check out the first week of August after that. It's going to be hot. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Morning, sir. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Thursday morning. Okay, some construction right now in San Marcos, but first let's get to this one. This is southbound US Highway 281, the flyover ramp to westbound Northwest Loop 410, right there near North Star Mall. Now, I can't confirm this is construction or an accident. However, something is going on in that flyover ramp. Try to get you more information on that. We also have some construction in San Marcos near the outlets. This is northbound I-35 North at Center Point Road. Looks like the, bar, the far two right lanes are blocked off. Don't know how long they will be blocked off, but just keep that in mind. If you have to go northbound 35 towards San Marcos, you're going to uh, run into this construction there. All right, this is the uh, accident or construction I'm talking about here in that flyover ramp. Uh, looks like it's still open, though, uh, with that one car going past there. Could be just one lane down on that ramp. Mark, Sarah, back to you. New this morning, a man's in pretty bad shape after San Antonio police say a driver crashed into him while trying to cross the street on the northwest side and drove away. Happened around 1030 last night at Fredericksburg and Louis Pasteur near University Hospital. Police say the victim, a man in his 20, was taken to the hospital in serious condition. SAPD says they don't have a good description of the suspect's vehicle that left the scene. The city of San Antonio now has a new way it reports numbers of COVID-19 cases. It's an effort to more accurately reflect the growth of coronavirus in our area. In the latest report, 946 new cases were reported for a total close to 39,000. More than 1,500 cases were reported the day before. Seven more deaths were added to the total for 342 COVID-related fatalities. But the city says labs are struggling to return test results within 24 hours, meaning the total daily totals could include cases that are days old. The city is now releasing a seven-day average of positive cases. They say will show a more accurate reflection of COVID cases in our community. The newest seven-day average of positive cases sits at 768. The lag in test results depends on each testing location and the contract they have with a specific lab to run those results. Metro Health says people who get tested at the free sites are receiving their results within two to three days, but for others, it's taking a week in some cases. Well, meanwhile, the U.S. surpassed a grim new milestone, 150,000 deaths from the coronavirus pandemic. And now a debate is underway as to how to reopen schools in many of those places. ABC's Alex Prochet has more this morning from Washington. 
As U.S. deaths from the coronavirus top 150,000, there are new concerns as the Department of Homeland Security has identified nearly 100 virus hotspots around the country. What happens if you are really in a hot zone? Then you got to be careful. The troubling trend is playing out across 30 states. In the South, Florida and Texas are having their deadliest days yet. They're exhausted. ER doctor Robert Rodriguez is working on the front lines in Brownsville, Texas. We're trying everything. Uh, but these patients are extremely, extremely sick. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling ABC's Dr. Jen Ashton he's especially concerned about potential outbreaks in Ohio, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana. You may be getting into the same sort of trouble with those states that the southern states got into trouble with. There's also the question of how to safely reopen schools. Putting hundreds and thousands of young people, teachers, and staff together in enclosed spaces like school buildings is an invitation for a COVID-19 super spreader event. Yesterday in Jeffersonville, Indiana, about 70% of students were back in school with masks and social distancing. But in Orlando, nearly 300 students are under quarantine after one person at an outdoor graduation tested positive. It's just like any other bubbly little girl out there. She was perfect. And now the mother of Florida's youngest victim is speaking out after her daughter died less than a day after getting sick. I don't think these kids should go back to school. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos acknowledged there is no national plan for schools. There's not a national superintendent, nor should there be. Therefore, there's not a national plan for reopening. Secretary DeVos isn't alone in that assessment. Many experts, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, believe that decision should be made at the local level. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Their headlines this morning, Tropical Storm Isaias has officially formed in the Atlantic. It's the earliest a storm beginning with I has appeared on record. People in Puerto Rico making preparations as the storm approaches. Isaias is uh, the ninth named storm of 2020 as it nears the Leeward Islands. In response, island residents began fueling up their cars and gathering supplies. Tropical storm warnings are up for all of Puerto Rico, U.S. Virgin Islands, and the British Virgin Islands. Turks and Caicos, Southeast Bahamas, parts of the Dominican Republic and Northern Haiti are also under a warning. The 2020 Atlantic hurricane season is off to a record breaking pace. Well, people in Southeast Texas town were shaken when they felt the ground move and a natural gas explosion. It happened in Mont Bellevue, which is near Houston. The explosion was caused by a piece of machinery that struck a liquid natural gas line at a facility owned by Lone Star NGL. The accident led to a fire that firefighters quickly got under control. Everyone in the plant is accounted for with no injuries reported. Remote control robots searching for remains at the site of a collapsed Hard Rock Hotel in New Orleans. Officials think the robots will be able to get at least one of the bodies that remain in the rubble. Three people died in the October 12th collapse last year. Crews are trying to recover the bodies of Quinion Wimberly and Jose Ponce Ariola. Wimberley's body is trapped on the 11th floor of the building. They believe the robots could reach him by early next week. Efforts then shift to reach the other man. He was buried on a pile of rubble on the 8th floor. 438, 77 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, a first look at a new simulation that shows how the coronavirus could be spread in the classroom and ways it could be prevented. The next the San Antonio Spurs get set to kick off the regular season against the Kings tomorrow. We have a preview and an update from the COVID free NBA bubble in Orlando. You know you live in South Texas when you call 96 degrees a cooler temperature. Mike will let us know if we're going to near we're going to be nearing triple digits as we clo get closer to the weekend. Our San Antonio Spurs will tip off the restart of their 2019-2020 NBA season tomorrow. That's after going 1-2 and two in scrimmages that included a 118-111 victory over the Pacers. It was their best performance so far inside the NBA bubble in Orlando. One of the big experiments the Spurs have been doing is developing their younger players. That includes starting Derek White alongside DeJounte Murray in the backcourt instead of Brent Forbes and placing Lonnie Walker in the starting lineup. This has meant a major adjustment for 11-year veteran DeMar DeRozan, who could be playing in his final season with the Spurs. That's due to an opt-out clause in his contract during this coming offseason. Some good news coming out of the bubble in Orlando. Out of 344 players tested for COVID on the NBA campus since July 20th, none have returned confirmed positive test results. That means so far, the bubble is holding. 
Again, the NBA season begins tomorrow again. Spurs face the Kings starting in Orlando. That game tips off at 7 o'clock San Antonio time. Way to go, NBA. No, right? It is working. It, it, it's, ha it's good to see an organization that understands it, and they're getting it done. It looks like you almost wish the other pro leagues would take another look at doing exactly. the bubble. Exactly. 442, 77 degrees. Still ahead, why a local jeweler is saying a recent rise in gold prices is actually better for customers right now. And when students return to class, some are worried if the ventilation system would further spread coronavirus. We'll take a look at what a new simulation shows. That's next. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new simulation showing how the coronavirus could spread in the classroom and what you may be able to do to prevent it. Researchers at the University of Minnesota zeroing in on the placement of ventilation units, desks, and people. Take a look at these two simulated classrooms. In one, they place the teacher, who's likely to do the most talking, directly below the ventilation system. In the other, the ventilation system is in the back of the room, the scenario assuming that the teacher is an asymptomatic carrier of the virus. As the simulation begins, you see the particles move around the classroom. But look closely. The virus spreads significantly less in the classroom where the teacher is directly below the vent. We'll have much more on school safety coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, the price of gold has skyrocketed since the beginning of the pandemic. Right now, experts say it's the highest it's ever been. Devin Clark tells us why one local jeweler says the jump in price is actually better for customers right now. Six gold coins, $11,000. One gold chain, $12,000. Two gold bracelets, $8,000. As the coronavirus pandemic rages on, unemployment rates are up, and so is the price of gold. In the last 60 days, Gold has jumped from 1684 to 1956. Chad Clark, owner of CD Clark and Design, which buys, sells, and manufactures gold, believes the unstable economy caused by the pandemic is behind this unprecedented spike. They say that gold rises when we print money, you know, um, and so printing money has something to do with it. But I also think there's an uncertainty. In, in, in our economy with COVID-19, I think has really affected this. This one ounce gold coin has been hovering around $1,965 today. The fact that it's at an all time high means good news for people who have some scrap gold lying around looking to sell, but the rise in prices does put a strain on local jewelers. It costs me more to, make, to buy gold, to manufacture jewelry. All the cost of jewelry goes up because you know, we're, we're a bridal manufacturer as well. While all that glitters isn't gold, Clark says even jewelry that is plated with the element holds increased value because the pieces can be melted and the gold can be filtered out, which means a simple dig around the house could strike you a bit of extra help during these tough times. Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. Right now it is 448 and our first traffic hit. Uh, Nick was telling us about some flashing lights out there and possible construction. Yeah, definitely, Mark. It looks like whatever was going on in the 281 flyover ramp to 410 uh, westbound is now gone, so that ramp is clear. Good news there. Still have some construction, though, in San Marcos. Northbound I-35 at Center Point Road near the outlets. The two right lanes, or the far two lanes, are closed down there. Don't know how long they, are, will, they will be closed down for, but just keep that in mind if you have to head that way. All right, let's take a look at the Trans Guy 35 at Evans. Looking good. Uh, 35 and 1604 looking better. Look at that. Smooth sailing there. And uh, we'll do one more 281 and winding way looking great. Thanks, Nick. We continue to enjoy some amazing KSAT Connect pictures. Yes, indeed. And uh, a lot of folks had some clouds left over right around sunset after some of those storms moved on through here. And I think that was the case here. Just an absolutely beautiful view. Um, and it really cooled down nicely with some of that uh, when those gust fronts and everything moved through late yesterday afternoon and some of that rain. Although, I mean, not the look of gift horse in the mouth that uh, could have used a whole lot more, unfortunately. Uh, the camera's a little out of focus this morning. It's not your not your eyes still half asleep. Uh, 72 is the dew point right now, so it's not bad. But we're starting to see these numbers coming up just a little bit more. We didn't have as many 74s on the map yesterday, so in some places you kind of notice the humidity just a bit more. All right, rainfall totals yesterday. Uh, a lot of it obviously down to the southeast. That's where the majority of it was and in and around town. 
half an inch close to an inch of rain around the metropolitan area. The airport did not pick up anything, just a trace, which goes down to the books as no rain at all. I can got a little bit around my backyard and uh, that was pretty much about it. The most significant thing I think was the fact that some of those outflow boundaries moved on through here and that helped to cool things down in the afternoon. But despite that, we still made it up to 97 degrees yesterday, so still one degree above normal. The upper low that uh, little counterclockwise circulation right there. That's what helped to give us the rain the past couple of days. It's pretty much out of the picture, and so that's why it's uh, pretty much taking rain chances out of the picture through this morning. Nothing but a couple of clouds out there, and even by about noon, we're not going to see anything trying to develop, nor even later on this afternoon. Are we going to see any of those showers, uh, you know, perhaps well down to the south, and that's going to be about the extent of it and the uh, the G whiz for this morning. Yes, it is uh, the latest tropical system out there. Isa Isa S uh, and that is what doesn't have the uh, information on it right there, but it is a very minimal a tropical storm and it is just going to work its way through some of the uh, the Caribbean islands and then right around Florida and then work its way up the eastern seaboard. So that's not going to have any sort of uh, impact on our weather. As far as forecast today, we are going to be up to 90 at noon, partly cloudy skies. And I think it's just uh, can't avoid it. So uh, looking for 100 for high temperature today. I mean, think about it the past couple of days. We've been up in the 98, 99 degree range, 97, and that was despite the fact that that front, those outflow boundaries moved on through the area. So, yeah, I think it's uh, pretty much inevitable today that we hit triple digits. Same thing tomorrow. Then tomorrow evening, we do have a chance for a couple of showers kind of moving here later on. And then primarily first part of the day on Saturday, even though we'll still have a couple of showers left over, but that's our best chance of rain as of right now on Saturday. Some of those showers and thunderstorms, maybe another shower to Monday, and then I think it's back to some triple digits for the first week of August. No. Would, wouldn't be shocked. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Right now we're 451, 77 degrees. Country music superstar Garth Brooks says he is pulling himself out of the running for this year's Entertainer of the Year Award. We'll tell you about that next. A couple of well-known game shows are back in production, and Garth Brooks is saying no thank you to a big award. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. This town's all about dreams. Veteran actor Dylan McDermott thrilled with his Emmy nomination this week, nominated for his role in the Netflix series Hollywood. His last nomination came in 1999 for The Practice, and he tells me he appreciates this one even more. I think this time around is even sweeter because you know a little bit more. You know how hard it is. You know how many actors there are, how many great shows there are how time passes you by sometimes, and you're like, wait a minute, what about me, me, me? The Emmys air September 20th on ABC. Speaking of award shows, Garth Brooks pulling himself out of the running for one of the big ones, the Country Music Association Awards Entertainer of the Year. He's won it seven times already, and he says, It's time for somebody else to hold that award, know what that entertainer feels like. And because uh, they're all out there busting their butts. And At a virtual news conference, yeah, Brooks explained that he loves the CMA Awards and he's honored by all the love they've shown him. And now it's time for the next generation to feel the love. Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune going back into production shut down since March because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In theory, new episodes will be ready for the new season starting in September. And while we wait for his latest movie, Tenet, to hit the big screen, director Christopher Nolan celebrates a big birthday today. He's 50. And blackish star Lawrence Fishburne is 59. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. It's 456 and 77 degrees. Still ahead on Good Morning San Antonio. When it comes to reopening schools, a couple of local leaders are demanding answers from Texas Governor Greg Abbott in a new letter. Plus, we'll speak to an engineer with NASA about the importance of the newest mission to Mars set to launch later this morning. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, local leaders demanding answers from Governor Greg Abbott following a change in messaging from the Texas Education Agency. Plus, a man is sentenced after leading police on a chase that spanned two counties and resulted in gunfire. Pretty typical summer pattern out there as you take a look at morning clouds hovering over downtown San Antonio. Mike's forecast is coming up as we get one day closer to wrapping up the work weekend. Good morning to you. Hope you slept well. It is Thursday. It is July 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. 
You were saying you slept well. Yeah, I did. Rest well last night. Doesn't always happen on our shift. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess Mike has a commentary there, too. Kind of goes without saying sometimes. That's, that's anyway. what naps are for, right? Pardon me? That's what naps are for. Amen to that. Love a good nap. So if kids only knew that, you know, how how great it is to have naps, the little ones. So uh, temperatures right now, it is definitely uh, on the warm side. We're a couple of degrees above normal. The humidity is not bad. Basically, we're in the mid 70s as of right now. And the dew points at 72, which is OK, although in places, it's just a just a hint higher than what it was the past couple of days, um, but it's not like that window dripping sort of humidity we had a, a few days ago. The aquifer dropped down again yesterday, so the 10 uh, day average sits at 655 just over that, and that's the number that we have to keep watching because that's got to go above 660 and doesn't look like that's going to be happening anytime soon. Mold is way up there. It really shot up yesterday, 21,000 plus, and pigweed is on the low side. And and as far as temperatures around the area right now, again, we are in the 70s, some low 70s in the hill country, so not that far from a normal low temperature. Uh, we may actually drop down another uh, degree or so. And like I said, mold is definitely on the high side this morning and uh, mostly cloudy, warm and humid, partly cloudy. I think we're going to be looking at uh, triple digit temperatures. We've been seeing a lot of them and very close to it the past couple of days. Uh, we'll have plenty of sunshine around here today, so there's really not a good reason that we won't be hitting 100. Uh, same thing tomorrow, but we will start to see some more clouds later on tomorrow night and maybe even in dinner by dinner time and then in the evening hours and then especially overnight into Saturday. We do have a fairly decent rain chance. We've got a disturbance which is going to be coming in here out of the north, so that's going to touch off some uh, showers and thunderstorms on Saturday. After that, as we get into the month of August, it'll be hot. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, Nick? Not much right now, Mike. A little bit of construction, and that's about it. A lot of green on the screen. No accidents to report good news if you're heading to work right now. Construction I was talking about is going to be northbound I-35 at Center Point Road. This is in San Marcos near the outlets. It looks like two lanes are blocked off there. Hopefully this construction will clear up by 6 a.m., but no guarantees. Just keep that in mind. If you're heading northbound 35 near that area, expect a little bit of a delay. All right, drive times. Eastbound 151 to 1604 to 99 minutes. And if you're eastbound 90 from 6 1604 to 35, 11 minutes. Taking a look outside of the Trans Guide, 10 in Austin Highway looking good. 10 West at 410 looking even better. And uh, 10 at Callahan East blowing smoothly. All right, everyone, I hope you have a great start to your morning. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Mayor Ron Nierberg and Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf are demanding answers from Governor Greg Abbott in a new letter. That's after a change in messaging from the Texas Education Agency and controversy from the Texas Attorney General. The confusion over who can keep classrooms closed to students continues. The one person that can iron out this whole mess is the governor. So we have asked him to uh, reinforce the message and the authority of our local public health. Um, authority uh, or uh, rescind the directive, one or the other, but this confusion has to end. Metro Health issued a directive to keep schools in Bear County closed to in-class learning until after Labor Day. The mayor says there are ways to enforce that directive if needed, but hopes it doesn't get to that point. In the midst of all this confusion, some teachers are resigning from their positions. TEA Commissioner Mike Morath has released a statement saying, quote, school systems planning on starting the year with 100% remote instruction will still be fully funded in accordance with TEA, TEA's previously announced eight week back to school transition funding waiver. But Morath also stated to generate funding for remote instruction, school systems must also provide daily on campus instruction for families that want to come on campus with some exceptions. Turning to the latest numbers in our area hospitals, we still have 12% of staffed hospital beds available, and the number of people hospitalized continues to decrease, as shown in this graph. We now have 1,007 people in the hospital and 389 people in ICU. 269 people are in ventilators. Many San Antonians finding themselves without a job because of the pandemic, and a local nonprofit organization is stepping up to help. Sam Ministries has been helping many people during the pandemic, including Johnny Arreta. He lost his job in 2019 that ended up at Haven for Hope. He said Sam Ministries helped him find a job, but then he lost the job due to the pandemic. Well, now the nonprofit is helping him find a new job and providing rent assistance. Sam Ministries says the expiration of the federal eviction protection 
They expect more people will be needing help. I actually might be homeless again if it wasn't for them. We've seen such an increased need in terms of folks who are either facing eviction um, in their current apartment um, or folks who have already been evicted um, and are needing to be rehoused as a result of, uh, of, their pan of the pandemic. Sam Ministry says they have an application for CARES Act funding pending that will potentially allow them to add more staff to serve more clients. The 2020 census data gathering is in full swing, but just how much information should you be giving away? According to the U.S. Census government website, you can expect to be contacted by mail, phone, or an in-person visit. But because of the pandemic in Texas, following UPS and surveys will only be made over the phone. The U.S. Census website says callers will identify themselves by name and ID, which can be verified by calling the number on the website. Census workers will not ask you for personal information, a payment, or your political affiliation. There's still a lot of scams, so people need to be extra careful. 20 years in prison and a stern lecture from the judge. That's what Matthew Hogan got for leading police on a gunfire punctuated chase in 2017 that covered two counties. Paul Veneva has more on the plea deal and the sentencing. This is where a police chase ended in mid-August 2017. Matthew Hogan crashed into a utility pole, ending a run from sheriff's deputies that began in Comal County almost an hour earlier. You didn't get out of your car either. You stayed in there. You had the gun on yourself for a little while. During this remote sentencing hearing with Hogan in jail, prosecutors urged Judge Moore to sentence Hogan to the maximum under the plea deal, 25 years in prison. Functionally. He held the city of San Antonio hostage for approximately 30 to 45 minutes. From the defense, a plea for leniency. There's no excuse. He understands that. He's motivated for whatever you want to give him, Judge. The judge gave him 20 years. You're very dangerous, sir. And uh, it doesn't give me any pleasure to sentence somebody to, to prison. But in your case, I want you to stay there. Uh, and I want you to be on supervised institutional supervision uh, for a very long time. He gave him credit for time he's already been in jail, almost three years, and made what's called an affirmative finding that a deadly weapon was used. That means Hogan must serve one half of his sentence before parole is a consideration. Paul Venema, KSAT 12 News. We have some late-breaking news in our...
It's a new countdown to Mars. NASA is sending its rover, rover Perseverance to Mars to send back live shots and answer the looming question, was there ever life on Mars? Perseverance will be launched later this morning, but we were able to speak with an engineer with NASA about the importance of this mission. Scientists believe that ancient Mars was warmer and had rivers and oceans and potentially life. NASA engineer Diana Trio explains what Perseverance is looking for. It's kind of looking for fossils, but not really. You know, you go back to where the minerals are and you go back to where the mud is and try to see if there's any, you know, biosignature at a very micro level that shows you that there was water. And then if there was water, potentially there were carbons and other things that show you that there was life at some point. Perseverance will travel 65 million miles for about seven months before landing on the red planet. It will have a sidekick, the Ingenuity Mars helicopter, which will be the first helicopter attempting to fly on another planet. Perseverance will also have nearly 11 million names stenciled on it submitted from people all over the world. And the evidence collected from that mission will help scientists prepare for future human exploration of the planet. Was it exciting to talk with that engineer? I was like a little girl. I was giddy. I was like, oh, she's so cool. She works at NASA. And then when I asked her about human exploration on Mars, she's like, well, it's been my dream to go to Mars, you know, mm -hmm. ever since I was a little girl. Oh, yeah. They're she got real up. excited. Everybody wants to get in line for that trip. <laughs> Right now it's 519. Let's check on traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, things looking good right now. If you're headed to work, expect a smooth ride. A lot of green on the screen. Things look great. A little bit of construction on northbound I-35 at Center Point Road near the outlets in San Marcos. Other than that, everything looks good. All right, let's take a look at the Trans Guide. Uh, 410 and Austin Highway. Very good traffic it's flowing there. It's flowing as well on I-10 and Callahan East. And uh, let's see what else we have here. 10 at Frio inbounds and outbounds. Looks great. Thanks, Nick. And I think the toughest thing about going to Mars, and they've talked about, is the fact that it takes so long to get there, mm -hmm. and then you got to wait for the planets to be in the proper position to come back, and it's going to take seven to nine months to, you know, for the return trip, Sue, and you can't take all that food. Mm -hmm. So how do you, you know, grow stuff and do all that with it? The Martian by Matt Damon. Yeah, Ma Matt Damon figured it out. Yes, he did. did lots of potatoes, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly right. <laughs> butter and sour cream and cheese for those. So, hey, Mr. Childers always sends beautiful pictures, and he uh, came through again. Great looking last night with all those beautiful clouds around there. So we're starting off this morning, and uh, we got our usual morning clouds hanging around. We, of course, had some of the rain around yesterday. Those uh, showers and a few thunderstorms developed down here to the southeast, moved on through, and we had some pretty good gust fronts that moved on through. They're kind of like little mini fronts that uh, are produced by storms as the, the air dropping down hits the, the ground and then just sort of spreads out. And think about it if you dropped like a, a bottle of a water balloon, it would go and hit out like that. That's what the uh, the atmosphere does. Anyway, that helped to cool us down yesterday. And the uh, center for that, you can see this counterclockwise rotation, or the reason for that was that low, but that's moving on out of here, and that's pretty much taking the rain chances with it. So here's what it looks like with the computer model. Today, nothing. Nah, maybe a couple of uh, showers there along the, the coast, and that's going to be about it. Now, this model does, uh, it tends to show some of this moisture returning as some rain. Uh, doubtful that we see anything tomorrow morning, but this is just how it depicts it. But what we're watching is later on tomorrow evening, notice how something starts coming in here from the north, and that's because we get into a north, uh, basically a northerly flow. There will be some showers, even a couple of thunderstorms late tomorrow night, and then uh, early in the morning on Saturday, and even a few leftovers throughout the day on Saturday and this is probably going to be our best chance for some uh, some rain around here and that was going to be overnight Friday late and basically the first half of the day on Saturday and then a couple of lingering uh, showers out there as well. So there is the uh, latest tropical storm, tropical storm Isa Is, and it is uh, has 60 mile per hour sustained winds. It's not going to do anything as far as we're concerned. It's not doesn't look like it's going to gain any uh, hurricane strength at all because it's going to be sort of uh, tiptoeing through a lot of the uh, Antilles here and so therefore it's not going to be in really the, the open water to get a lot of strength from that and at times it will get kind of beat up by some of the islands and then it looks like it's going to be moving into Florida and uh, I was just reading where uh, could have an effect on its path as it goes through Florida the um, Dragon space uh, the crew is supposed to come back on Sunday 
and that may have to be delayed depending on what that tropical system does as far as passing by Florida. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature today. Sorry, I think we're going to do it 100. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have to apologize for the no, forecast. It's not my, two, but it's, it's just, not your fault. I know, but uh, I think we're going to be up close to 100 again tomorrow. And just, you know, you look at the past couple of days and the trend has been to be on the hotter side of things and without any rain out there really today to speak of. And Seventy-seven degrees. Up next in your morning spotlight, a preview of a new documentary about a fashion legend, plus a new, plus a look at an act at actress Sarah Paulson as Nurse Ratchet. Pierre Cardin. Pierre Cardin. Pierre. 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 You know, Pierre Cardin. You probably know the name, the fashions, even the logo, but what do you know about the man? House of Cardin is a new documentary about the now 98-year-old avant-garde designer. Other industry notables, celebrities, and Cardin himself weigh in on the fashion legend's career in the film, which debuts in theaters and on digital platforms in late August. Sarah Paulson is taking on a legendary movie villain. Ratchet provides an origin story for Nurse Ratchet from One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Paulson plays her as she arrives to work at a psychiatric hospital in 1947 and begins a descent into darkness. The eight-episode series premieres September 18th on Netflix. I go in the night of love, never get enough. I keep going in the night of love, trying to get Melanie C. is back. The Spice Girls alumna has announced her self-titled eighth studio album is due out October 2nd. She also unveiled the track list for the album and released her latest single, In and Out of Love, which she called a pure pop, upbeat, positive, fun tune. I think it's exactly what the world needs right now. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Sporty Spice. You said it's Sporty Spice. Sporty Spice. Okay. I haven't seen her since the 90s. Why didn't they just say Sporty Spice? Everyone knows who Sporty Spice is. Okay. Uh, 527, 77 degrees. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, three former presidents are expected to attend today's funeral service for the late Congressman John Lewis. Plus, President Trump is amping up his push to capture suburban voters, claiming Democrats are out to destroy their American dream. Good morning to you. It is Thursday, July 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. This morning, it's kind of eh, outside. The humidity's back. Yeah, the trend's been that way all week to be kind of eh out there because of all the humidity and the right. clouds, and then things get just scorching in the afternoon. Well, we had a bunch of humidity, and then it kind of you know dropped down a little bit uh, yesterday morning. It was slightly more comfortable. It's kind of back somewhat. Um, Temperature 77, heat index 78. So it's not like we're seeing these outrageous heat index numbers around the area as of right now. Uh, one or two degrees above that. Obviously, that means that though that there is still a little bit of a humidity out there. Mold is way up there. Boy, it went up about uh, what was 2,900 the previous day. Now 21,600. Uh, pigweed is on the low side. And throughout the rest of today, 90 at noon. And I think it's uh, unavoidable. 100. What I'm going for for a high temperature today and don't really have any rain chances in the forecast. You know, there's always at this time of year something perhaps along the uh, the coastal plain right there along the sea breeze. But other than that, I don't think we're going to have a repeat of yesterday at all, nor will that be the case tomorrow. But I think we're going to look at another 100 degree day tomorrow. Then tomorrow night, better rain chances start to work their way down here from the north. Details on that. A closer look at the weekend forecast coming up. Time saver traffic and Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, sir? Not much right now, Mike. A lot of green on this screen there. If you're headed to work, expect a smooth ride. Not too much going on right now. A little bit of construction on northbound I-35 at Center Point Road. We got two lanes blocked off. Uh, this is near the outlets in San Marcos. If you have to head that way, expect a little bit of delay, but hopefully it'll be done by about 6 a.m. that construction. Let's take a look at some drive times. Westbound, uh, I-10 westbound from the northwest side of I-35 to 16.04, 12 minutes. And if you're 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 16.04 to IH-35, 13 minutes. So really 
really good times. All right, trans guy 35 and Ben Zingelman looking good right now, flowing smoothly 35 and 410 the same flowing very, very smoothly there. And let's see what else we have here 35 at Evans. So the whole 35 corridor looking great. All right, Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, sir. We want to get to some late breaking news. San Antonio police are on the scene of a shooting on the west side. It happened this morning around four in the 3200 block of West Salinas. Our Katrina Weber is on scene and has spoken to investigators. Katrina, what can you tell us that has happened out there? Well, good morning. It was a home invasion with a 56 year old woman and her 19 year old son both shot in their home. The home is here on West Salinas at the corner of Hamilton. It's just down the street where the porch light is on. It's hard to see through the trees, but that's where police have been working. Now, just within the last few minutes, we saw a couple of people uh, who were handcuffed and in the back of police cars. The official word that we have, though, is that they have not made any arrests in this case. It's possible those people are witnesses or maybe were detained for some other reason, but police say they have not arrested anyone so far. This happened before 430. They say that two gunmen forced their way into the home and then shot the woman and her son. Uh, they're not exactly sure why, but there was some loud yelling and cussing just prior to the shooting. Police say they uh, shot the two of them. They both were taken to the hospital uh, to be treated. They said it does not look like the wounds were life threatening, although the son was shot in his chest and leg. And uh, police have been here ever since trying to piece together what what happened here exactly and and why and also trying to get some better descriptions of the people involved. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. There is a reward of up to $10,000 in this Crime Stoppers case. Take a good look at this man. He's accusing the death of a store clerk at an easy mart in Garden Ridge yesterday morning. That is north of Live Oak. Police say 40 year Pollyanna Smotherman of Cibolo was shot and killed. Police say the man in this photo took off with cash and lottery tickets. If you have any information, call Garden Ridge Police at 210-651-6441 or Comal County Crime Stoppers at 830-620-TIPS. Well, today marks six months since the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus outbreak a public health emergency of international concern. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, this comes one day after the U.S. death toll passes 150,000 confirmed deaths. The United States has yet to flatten the coronavirus curve. It's like whack-a-mole with hotspots all over this country. It's just going to keep popping up if we don't do something nationally. President Trump is calling on governors to reopen their states, but his coronavirus task force is warning the 21 red states on this map that stronger restrictions might be needed. The yellow states are also under the microscope. We've got to help the public understand you've got to be part of the solution. And if not, I can't even imagine what the next 6 to 12 months are like without a vaccine. It will be close to the gates of hell. Johns Hopkins University reports the U.S. recorded 50,000 deaths in just over two months. And the resurgence seen in the South and West is now heading toward the Midwest. We're starting to see that in some of the states now, Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, uh, and other Indiana. The bottom line is health experts say the U.S. has to do more to fight this pandemic. We have a whole set of new testing capabilities that can give results in 15 minutes or half an hour. Those tests exist today. The federal government could partner with those companies, ramp our production, and make sure that there are tens of millions of those tests available around the country within weeks. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, three former presidents are expected to attend today's funeral service for the late Congressman John Lewis. Sources report former President Barack Obama will give the eulogy at Lewis's funeral. They also say former presidents Bill Clinton and George W. Bush will participate in the service as well. Lewis's funeral will be held at Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church later this morning. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. famously served as a pastor for the church. Lewis was a friend of King's and a civil rights icon himself. Today's funeral marks the last of six days of memorial services in his honor. L.A. Dodgers pitcher Joe Kelly has been suspended for eight games by Major League Baseball a day after throwing a fastball near the head of Houston Astros star Alex Bregman and taunting Astros star Carlos Correa. Benches cleared after Kelly's actions during the sixth inning of the L.A.'s 5-2 win at Minute Maid Park. The game marked the first time the teams had met since it was revealed Houston stole signs en route to a 2017 World Series title that came at the Dodgers' expense. 
Dodgers manager Dave Roberts was suspended one game, and Astros manager Dusty Baker was fined an undisclosed amount. Dodgers beat Houston 4-2 in 13 innings. It's 537 and 77 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, getting feedback from teachers and parents about how they feel about the risk of students returning to face-to-face -face instruction this fall. And next, the latest on President Trump's visit to West Texas, where he was criticized. An Obama-era fair housing rule. Outside with live cam, Mike's forecast coming up right here on GMSA. Grab a cup of coffee and we'll be right back. 540, top stories this morning. President Trump is facing some scrutiny for comments he made about affordable housing and the suburbs. He made the comments while discussing the rollback of a housing rule while in West Texas. ABC's Alex Perche has that story. This morning, President Trump echoing his attacks on a fair housing rule he recently revoked. There will be no more low-income housing forced into the suburbs. I abandoned and took away and just rescinded the rule. The Obama-era rule forced local governments that receive federal housing funds to assess patterns of racial housing discrimination and submit plans to eliminate it. On Wednesday, the president tweeted, I am happy to inform all the people living their suburban lifestyle dream that you will no longer be bothered or financially hurt by having low-income housing built in your neighborhood. Your housing prices will go up based on the market and crime will go down. Enjoy. Later in Texas, the president reaffirming that message. I've seen conflict for years. It's been hell for suburbia. We rescinded the rule three days ago. So enjoy your life, ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your life. Housing and Urban Development Secretary Ben Carson argued the rule was unworkable and ultimately a waste of time for localities to comply with. But critics say the president is trying to stoke racial division and appeal to white suburban voters with fewer than 100 days until the election. Julian Castro, the housing secretary under President Obama, blasted the move. These guys come in a couple of years later and they put it on ice and say, no, no, right. uh, we're going to go backward to take us back to 1950 or choose your year when people could still be discriminated against because of the color of their skin. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy, a Democrat, tweeting, it's not even a dog whistle anymore. Our president is now a proud vocal segregationist. President Trump and his father were sued by the Justice Department in the 70s for their company's practice of discriminating against black tenants. If elected, former Vice President Joe Biden promised to reinstate the fair housing rule, which is included in his campaign's housing plan. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 542, 77 degrees. Up next, we hear from teachers and parents about how they feel about the risk of students returning to in-person learning this fall. 545, is it worth the risk? That's the question many teachers and parents are asking themselves as they prepare for the new school year and potentially face-to-face -face instruction. Here's a preview of this week's episode of KSAT Explains Back to School During a Pandemic. I haven't come to a decision yet about if, if, if it's worth it in terms of, of the job. Is it worth it in terms of doing what's right for kids? Absolutely. There's no doubt that teachers are committed to their students. Teachers are willing to take a bullet for their kids. But now what you're asking me to do is take that bullet home to my family. Eighth grade social studies teacher Adrian Reyna is torn and concerned. Concerned because if his school returns to in-person learning, he could be exposed to COVID-19 and potentially bring it home to his parents. The San Antonio Alliance estimates about 70% of teachers take care of a child, an elderly person, or someone with a compromised immune system. How is this going to be done safely when we don't even have a handle on it in the city? And what kind of stress does that put on healthcare resources in the hospital system if we're already stretched thin. Adrian teaches at Longfellow Middle School on the Northwest side. He's been with San Antonio ISD for 10 years. Longfellow is primarily made up of Latinx students. 90% are socioeconomically disadvantaged. He says he and other teachers understand how crucial face-to-face -face interaction is for students. How are we going to really be able to um, let our students know that we're there for them and, and, and are able to help them in all the, the various ways, but mainly be able to build that relationship with them and let them know that we're, we're more than just their teacher. Returning to the classroom, a decision teachers across Bear County will have to make that won't be made lightly. I don't think there's a teacher who's going to say that that being in person is not the, mo is the most effective thing. I, I think that is definitely something we can all agree on. However, the question is, is it safest?
Well, starting today, you can watch KSAT Explains back to school during a pandemic on demand on the KSAT TV app that's available on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other smart TV devices. You can also watch KSAT Explains on KSAT.com. We've been chatting about this off and on all week. The pandemic bringing up concerns of child abuse. With help from our KSAT community partners, we brought up the issue for discussion in a digital town hall. The crucial conversation with some of Bear County's leading experts included what signs to look out for and how you can report abuse. Just take a look. The year 2019 saw more than 5,300 confirmed victims of child abuse and neglect in Bear County alone. In 2020, that number is expected to rise even higher due to the coronavirus pandemic. It's so important even right now during this pandemic to make sure that we have this, the resources and the support for our families. What is perhaps the biggest fear is how we're connecting with families, especially as families are closing their doors shutting themselves out, not opening themselves out, not calling in for help, or not knowing where to call for help. There is a concern that we have this abuse and neglect and we may not know about it. With COVID and with the history of their abuse, sometimes, um, sometimes families can become desensitized because they're so used to operating in fragile environments. And I think um, at the children's shelter, we make sure that our our educators and our home visitors, our clinicians, um, are all aware of the impact of such a pandemic can have on a family. We talk about physical abuse, so that's having an inflicted injury, a bruise, a broken bone or fracture or um, other physical injuries that you might see. Sexual abuse is another form of abuse that sometimes um, there's not physical signs that you see, but it's more behavioral, so it sort of depends on each child. and. Um, what they're doing or what they're saying. You add in the, the level of a, a, a global pandemic in and at the risk of the virus coming into their home and that's been a really unique challenge and we need, we always need foster parents. Now we need foster parents more than ever and we need foster parents that are willing to open their home to that increased risk. We are all in this business to take care of children and families in our community and people should not be ashamed to call for help. That's what we're here for. If you'd like to see more than some sound bites, go to our website at ksat.com. We're going to check in with Officer Nick Solis for an update on traffic. Yeah, not much to update here. Things are looking good all around the city. No accidents uh, reported. If you're headed to work, expect a smooth ride. A little bit of construction here in San Marcos. Hopefully this gets cleared up any minute now. This is blocking off two of those three lanes there on northbound 35 at Center Point Road near the outlets. Just uh, expect a little bit of delay, but right now a lot of green there. Outside the Trans Guy, things are looking good. 281 and 410, 281 in Grayson, flowing very smoothly right now. Traffic is definitely picking up a little bit, though. 410 in Austin Highway and 10 at 410 looking I ten at 410 looking good. All right, Mike, how's the weather? Well, it's going to be hot today. And first of all, starting off with a beautiful picture. I love this from uh, Mr. Olson, who is quite the bird photographer out there. A painted, a male painted bunting. Mike, Checking out. Yes, I just I saw one in person for the first time in my life just a month or so ago, and it was beautiful. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're hard to spot every now and then, but well, I mean, not hard to spot. Once you see them, you're like, there it is. It was gorgeous. You need to snap a picture next time. So, but thank you uh, very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we've, uh, well, a little out of focus there with this uh, camera, but uh, we do have some of our, a few of our morning clouds hanging around. And we had a beautiful rain yesterday. Of course, those showers and thunderstorms developed down here along the uh, the coast and then moved their way up to the northwest. We had some of those outflow boundaries. Some folks got some decent showers, basically 35 and southeast of there. And then, and we other folks didn't get anything uh, out at the airport. It was a trace officially and which goes down to the record books as nothing. So this is uh, when it's all said and done going to go down as one of the driest July's on the books. Uh, jumping ahead in time, we don't have anything in the offing for today nor throughout most of the day tomorrow, but by tomorrow late in the day, we're going to be looking up to the north. Usually, you know, this time of year, you think of everything coming in here off the uh, the coast and off the Gulf of Mexico as far as rain, but we've got this uh, disturbance which is going to be sliding down here from North Texas, and this is what is going to be touching off our chance for 
some showers and even a couple of thunderstorms around the area. I think the majority of it's going to be uh, late, late tomorrow night and the first portion of the day through about mid morning on Saturday, but we'll still have a few scattered showers around here on Saturday as well. And uh, then there are going to be fewer and further between on Sunday and just a couple of them scattered about here. And that's going to be the situation going into next week as well. So here's what's going on. We had that low which moved on through here. Uh, it was kind of hanging out and that's what gave us the rain a couple of days ago, gave us the rain yesterday. Now it is working its way further off to the southwest, getting pushed out of here, sort of getting torn apart and it's just going to be falling apart. And that's why our rain chances basically fall apart as well. So the high pressure pretty much takes over and this is the dominant one off to the west and that's putting us in this northerly flow. And so there's actually a bit of a front which is going to be thrown down in here. It's not going to come anywhere near us, unfortunately. So don't get your hopes up for anything when you hear the word front, but it will be the the focal point, the triggering mechanism for some of these showers and a few of those thunderstorms around here uh, on Saturday, especially with this northerly flow. After that, it's just going to start getting hotter as we go into next week. So we'll have more clouds around to keep temperatures down a little bit on Saturday, but uh, beyond that for the first week of August, it's going to be upper 90s and even some triple digits. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then high temperature today up to 100. I think it's uh, I don't think we can avoid it. Same thing tomorrow and then Saturday temperatures will stay down somewhat as we stay in the uh, mid 90s, but then it's going to be back to the upper 90s and triple digits going into the uh, middle part of next week. Thank you, Mike. 553, 77 degrees. Let's take a look at today's lotto numbers. Pick three, seven, nine, nine, fireball eight, daily four, zero, six, five, one, fireball three. Cash five numbers, two, six, 15, 25, 28. Lotto Texas, three, seven, 10, 12, 32, 51. And Powerball, seven, nine, 35, 40, 45. Powerball 26, power play two. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the COVID-19 emergency now colliding with hurricane season. The record-breaking tropical storm ECAS is now barreling through the Caribbean. Florida to the northeast on high alert. We are tracking the very latest. That plus much more coming up only on GMA. We'll see you soon. And still ahead of Good Morning San Antonio, schools make changes to adapt to the pandemic. A San Antonio company is offering thermal scanners for contact-free temperature checks. We'll take a closer look at the device. And Officer Nick Solis is here keeping, keeping an eye on the roads. There's 35 at Evans, always busy, but especially this morning. We'll get an update on any major accidents around the metro area still to come on GMSA. A man is in the hospital after a hit and run on the northwest side, and right now, police are still trying to learn more about the driver who hit him. The Department of Homeland Security has identified nearly 100 coronavirus hotspots around the country. I'm Alex Brashay in Washington, coming up what that means for schools trying to reopen this fall. Taking a look outside with live cam, it's still muggy out there at 76 degrees, and feeling the triple digits are coming back to San Antonio. Mike will let you know about that in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Sure does. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, July 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Fortunately, it's, it's nasty out there. It's typical July weather, which means triple digit heat. I guess the question this morning from Mike Ostrage, are any records in jeopardy in the next few days? You know, always close to them. Records are, are in the low hundreds, and I'm going for 100 today as well as tomorrow. So it'll be within a, a few degrees, and there could be in some of the you know, outlying areas. But, uh, you know, as far as triple digit heat, yesterday we you want to say only made it up to 97 degrees, but that was right uh, right before those outflow bunders, those gust fronts moved through from some of those uh, showers and thunderstorms that were developing. So we were definitely on the way to get up into the upper 90s and a lot of areas might have hit 100 yesterday, which is why um, basically with nothing changing except for the fact we're not going to have any rain out there, which is why I'm going for triple digits today. 76 in town, 75 Bulverde, normal low 75. So we are, you know, about where it should be, and that's good old late July kind of heat. Mold is very, very high. Went up to 
uh, almost 22,000 yesterday. Pigweed is on the low side and temperatures today. We are in the mid 70s and then we're going to be with a few clouds around here. Make it all the way up to 90 today at noon and then add about 10 to that and we'll have a few clouds hanging around here, but basically just a lot of sunshine and that's definitely going to be heating things up. So going for 100 degrees, like I said, today as well as tomorrow. Then we do have some slightly better rain chances coming in here to start off the weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and Officer Nick Solis and boy, there really hasn't been much of anything out there today. Yeah, it's good news for everyone. Real slow yeah. out there. No accidents. Let's just look at these drive times here. Let's go straight to there. 10 eastbound from I-10 or 10 eastbound from 46 to 1604, 37 minutes. And if you're 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to 35, only 13 minutes is so still really good times. All right, Trans Guy 281 at Grayson, looking good. 10 at Austin Highway, great. 10 west at Loop 410, flowing smoothly. 10 at Callahan East, looking good. And we'll do one more. Let's see, what, what do we got? 10 at Rio going into downtown and coming out looks great. All right, everyone. I hope you have a great start to your morning. Remember, go to the speed limit, wear that seatbelt, and get to work safely. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Let's go back to late breaking news. We've been following all morning here on GMSA. Police are on the scene of a shooting in the 3200 block of West Salinas. That's on the west side near Martin and South Zarzamora. Our Katrina Live is there with an update. Well, good morning. Uh, as far as we know, still no arrest in this case, although police did have a couple of people in their cars who they had handcuffed and took away, but they told us no arrest so far. We're not sure why those people are in custody. But what happened this morning is that two people were shot in their home here at the corner of West Salinas and Hamilton. Police tell us that before 4.30, two men with guns came in. Uh, there was a lot of yelling and cussing, and then they shot a 56-year-old woman and her 19-year-old son. The son was hit in the chest and leg. The woman just in the leg, both of them taken to the hospital with what police say are probably not life-threatening wounds. They're not sure exactly what led to this, but they suspect that it possibly could be related to a robbery, although they were not able to say if anything was taken. They don't have a very thorough description of the suspects. They only know that the two gunmen were wearing hoodies when they ran off from this home. And again, so far, no arrests in this case. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, a man's in the hospital after San Antonio police say a driver crashed into him while he was crossing a street on the northwest side. The hit and run happened around 1030 last night at Fredericksburg and Louis Pasteur near University Hospital. Police say the victim, a man in his 20s, was taken to the hospital in serious condition after he was hit. SAPD says they don't have a good description of the suspect's vehicle that left the scene. Bear County health officials reported 946 new cases of COVID-19 and seven new deaths in the past 24 hours. Mayor Ron Nirenberg also says San Antonio has averaged about 768 cases a day over the past week. Even though the cases continue to increase, hospitalizations are gradually declining. Right now, there are 12% of hospital beds available in Bear County and fewer people are in ICU and on ventilators. Many San Antonians finding themselves without a job because of the pandemic and a local nonprofit organization is stepping in to help. Sam Ministries has been helping many people during the pandemic, including Johnny Adetta. He says the nonprofit is helping him find a new job and providing rent assistance. Sam Ministries says they expect more people to need help with the expiration of federal eviction protections. I actually might be homeless again if it wasn't for them. We've seen such an increased need in terms of folks who are either facing eviction um, in their current apartment um, or folks who have already been evicted um, and are needing to be rehoused as a result of, uh, of, their pan of the pandemic. Sam Ministry says they have an application for CARES Act funding in the works that will potentially allow them to add more staff to help more people. Well, Mayor Ron Nirenberg and Judge Nelson Wolf are demanding answers from Governor Greg Abbott about reopening schools. The two penned a letter asking for clarification on statements from Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton and the Texas Education Agency. Metro Health issued a directive to keep schools in Bear County closed to end class learning until after Labor Day. However, the TEA and Attorney General have sent mixed messages on what schools are required to do require if schools are required to follow local guidelines. 
TA Commissioner Mike Morath released a statement saying, quote, school systems planning on starting the year with 100% remote instruction will still be fully funded in accordance with TA's previously announced eight-week back-to-school transition funding waiver. But Morath also stated to generate funding from remote instruction, school systems must also provide daily on-campus instruction for families that want to come on campus, with some exceptions. The debate to open school continues to play out on a national level as well. There are now 98 identified coronavirus hotspots around the country. More than 150,000 people have died. ABC's Alex Perche has more. Good morning. The Trump administration has made it clear that they want kids back in the classroom, but the sheer number of COVID cases and deaths have many parents on edge. As U.S. deaths from the coronavirus top 150,000, there are new concerns as the Department of Homeland Security has identified nearly 100 virus hotspots around the country. What happens if you are really in a hot zone? Then you got to be careful. The troubling trend is playing out across 30 states. In the South, Florida and Texas are having their deadliest days yet. Dr. Anthony Fauci telling ABC's Dr. Jen Ashton he's especially concerned about potential outbreaks in Ohio, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Indiana. You may be getting into the same sort of trouble with those states that the southern states got into trouble with. There's also the question of how to safely reopen schools. Putting hundreds and thousands of young people, teachers, and staff together in enclosed spaces like school buildings is an invitation for a COVID-19 super spreader event. Yesterday in Jeffersonville, Indiana, about 70% of students were back in school with masks and social distancing. But in Orlando, nearly 300 students are under quarantine after one person at an outdoor graduation tested positive. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos acknowledged there is no national plan for schools. There's not a national superintendent, nor should there be. Therefore, there's not a national plan for reopening. Secretary DeVos isn't alone in that assessment. Many experts, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, believe that decision should be made at the local level. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. If you live in Guadalupe County, you can be tested for COVID-19 for free tomorrow. Testing will take place at the Schertz Community Center from 8 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. You do not need to schedule an appointment. However, testing will only take place while supplies last. And happening today, businesses and nonprofits in San Antonio District 5 can pick up free personal protective equipment. District 5 encompasses areas just west and southwest of downtown. The giveaway will take place at the West San Antonio Chamber of Commerce on General Hudnell from 9 to 11 this morning. Businesses and nonprofits will be able to pick up hand sanitizer, masks, and a thermometer. The goal is to help keep those businesses and organizations up and running during the pandemic. 2020 Census data gathering is in full swing, but just how much information should you be giving away? Because of the pandemic in Texas, Census Bureau follow-ups and surveys will only be made over the phone, and the U.S. Census website says callers will identify themselves by name and ID, which can be verified by calling the number on the website. Census workers will not ask you for personal information, a payment, or your political affiliation. However, there are still a lot of scams, so everyone should be careful. I look around and I think, I think about my neighborhood, and there's so many people that maybe don't even have the internet. Um, some people still have landlines. Um, some are elderly. They'll call. They'll give up. They'll give up all the information. There is still a lot of information on the U.S. Census website about the kind of questions you may be asked and how to verify if you got that call is if you get that call, if it's real or a scam, you can just head to ksat.com for that link. 610, 76 degrees. Well, exercise apps are gaining popularity with younger people, but we will look at how the, how the use of those apps are causing mental and physical problems. Astronomers often wonder if we are alone in the universe, and now they will search our nearest planetary neighbor for clues. We'll tell you about the upcoming Mars launch after the break. Well, we're definitely not alone in getting together, getting through this heat together. It's 76 degrees and I think triple digits are in our future. Mike will let us know about that when we come back. Six fourteen. are we alone in the universe? No. And was there ever life on Mars? Maybe. <laughs> it's the question that Na NASA has been trying to answer <laughs> for centuries, and it is why they are launching a rover to the red planet in just about 
20 minutes later this morning. The mission rover is named Perseverance, and it's the most robust rover ever to be sent to Mars. Perseverance will travel 65 million miles for about seven months before landing on the red planet. It will have a sidekick, the Ingenuity Mars helicopter, which will be the first helicopter attempting to fly on another planet. Scientists believe that ancient Mars was warmer and had rivers and oceans and potentially life. That's why the rover's job is to collect evidence that shows there was once life on Mars. The evidence will help test important technology for future human exploration of the planet. We're also having a very exciting instrument on uh, Perseverance, which is the MOXIE instrument. MOXIE is actually generating oxygen on the surface of Mars. And so if you think about that, we're, we're doing baby steps of what it takes to keep a human alive on the surface of Mars. Perseverance will also have nearly 11 million names stenciled on it. Those were submitted from people all over the world. And we're waiting on that launch. I know, and it's at 6.50 this morning. You can watch it on the NASA website. Awesome. Have to check it out. Right now it is 6.15, 76 degrees. Mike's forecast is coming up, but first... Let's launch it over to Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, launch it over. It's a lot of green on the screen there. If you're headed to work right now, you got time for a pit stop. Get a snack, get a sausage biscuit, a taco, anything, because things are looking good out there. No accidents to report. Look at this. Look outside. 10 and 1604 in the northwest side. Looking great right now. 1604 in Tradesman, just down the highway there. Same. Looks good. What else we got here? 10 at the Y. Looking great. And one more. Let's see what. Uh... There we go, 35 in Laredo, that's a new one. And traffic flowing very smoothly there as well. Sticking with things beyond Earth's orbit. Yes, indeed. Good old moon. It's always fun to look at the full moons and as the moon goes through its phases there. And, and it is in the waxing gibbous stage and it is going to be full come Monday, August the 3rd. And that is the uh, full sturgeon moon, according to all the lore, because this was a good time and for fishing for sturgeon around the Great Lakes areas. Well, there you go. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. And uh, no, no moon in this picture at all. We do have some clouds this morning. The dew point temperatures, 72. That's not bad. Uh, we are up a little bit. Basically around the area, these numbers were down around 7170 for the most part yesterday. So a little bit more humidity around there this morning, although it's not like uh, what it was a few days ago when it was just that kind of wet towel when you walked outside. Humidity will drop down a little bit later on today and then obviously start to come back up, but we'll still have enough humidity out there to give us a, a heat index. And so it's going to be well up into the, the low hundreds today. And we will keep, even though humidity levels in the afternoons will come down slightly toward the end of the week, uh, end of the weekend and the first part of next week, we'll still have enough afternoon humidity to where you're going to notice it. So heat index is going to be something that will definitely be uh, catching your attention for the next couple of days. So we had those uh, showers that moved through yesterday and they developed down here to the southeast and and that's pretty much it. And the, uh, the reason for it, that counterclockwise spin right over there moving off to the southwest has continued to work its way out of here. So that's pretty much taking that was keeping the atmosphere sort of churned up a little bit and allowing those uh, showers to develop. There may be one or two of them along the coastal plain, but otherwise that's pretty much it as far as any uh, rain development is concerned. This morning we'll just have a few clouds around the area and by noon pretty much the same thing. We'll start obviously to see more sunshine by noon mid afternoon. I mean this computer model isn't really even showing anything developing by mid afternoon or even by dinner time. Uh, just a couple of clouds here and there and again maybe something along the coastal plain and that would be about it. So the uh, tropical season which we are now almost uh, a third of the way through. It started the 1st of June. June, July and goes through the end of November. So first two months are basically done and we have got, we're up to the letter I right now. Isa Isa is uh, 60 mile per hour winds and it's uh, dumping a lot of rain here in the uh, Lesser Antilles. And this is gonna work its way in through the Bahamas and just to the north of Cuba and then head in toward Florida as we go in toward the weekend and then work its way up the eastern seaboard. So this is not gonna have any direct impact on us, but it is gonna be a big rain producer. And as of right now, it doesn't look like it's gonna be uh, getting any stronger than tropical storm strength, but a pretty strong tropical storm. 90 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, high temperature, 
Well, I think we're going to be hitting it today up to 100 and partly cloudy skies. Same thing tomorrow. A couple of showers going to be possible late tomorrow and also Saturday, especially the first part of the day. There's a disturbance. Actually, it's a kind of a front that's going to be lying across the northern portion of the state, and it's going to be enough to just kind of be the next triggering mechanism for some of these uh, showers, thunderstorms around here on Saturday. So, OK, yeah, all right, but no, don't. When I say front, I'm afraid to say that word this time of year because people think, ooh, cold. No, 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 it's not going to happen. So. Reality sets in. Every degree, every degree counts. That's true. Yeah. 620, 76 degrees. Well, a new demonstration shows how a ventilation system in a classroom could make a big difference in the spread of coronavirus. We'll have more details in your GMA First Look. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a free iced coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. This year, the Alzheimer's Association walk to end Alzheimer's is everywhere. On every sidewalk, track, and trail across this country. All of us are raising funds for one goal, a world without Alzheimer's and all other dementia. Because this disease isn't waiting, neither are you. Take the first step on your walk right now. Go to alz.org slash walk. It's Cole's Friends and Family Sale. With an extra 20% off, save on a Keurig coffee maker, twin XL bedding sets, and with 25% off top active brands, save on Under Armour gear for the family. Plus, get Kohl's cash. Plus, limited contact store drive up. Shop Kohl's and Kohl's.com. Allergies with nasal congestion overwhelming you? Breathe more freely with powerful Claritin D. Claritin D improves nasal airflow two times more than the leading allergy spray at hour one. Claritin D. Get more airflow. In this morning's GMA First Look, a new simulation showing how the coronavirus could spread in the classroom and what you may be able to do to prevent it. Researchers at the University of Minnesota zeroing in on the placement of ventilation units, desks, and people. Take a look at these two simulated classrooms. In one, they place the teacher, who's likely to do the most talking, directly below the ventilation system. In the other, the ventilation system is in the back of the room, the scenario assuming that the teacher is an asymptomatic carrier of the virus. As the simulation begins, you see the particles move around the classroom. But look closely. The virus spreads significantly less in the classroom where the teacher is directly below the vent. We'll have much more on school safety coming up at 7 a.m. Plus, Dr. Jen Ashton weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. A security upgrade from Mercedes-Benz. The 2021 S-Class will be the first production car with rear seat airbags. They'll deploy out of the backs of the front seats. A new study says young people's use of fitness apps could lead to obsessive behavior and anxiety. Researchers found children as young as eight were using the internet to lose weight and get in shape. They warned that fitness trackers and other health apps could result in too much exercise or harmful eating habits. Lamborghini's out with a new car so powerful it's not legal on public roads. The company can transport the car to any racetrack for an owner to drive. And it can be stored in a special garage equipped with a webcam for the owner to view. Lamborghini has not yet released a price. America's favorite beverage and favorite breakfast are joining up. Duncan has partnered with Post to create Duncan cereal. One has crunchy cereal pieces with caramel swirled marshmallows, and the other has hints of chocolate and latte swirled marshmallows. Each cereal does contain a bit of caffeine, caffeine but only about one tenth of a cup of coffee. Duncan says the product will be available in August. Well, that's one way to get the kids up in the morning, right? Just give them a little, <laughs> so not just a sugar rush. <laughs> yeah, do both. Make sure they're up. 625, 76 degrees. We've been following a shooting on the west side all morning. We will get an update in our next half hour from our Katrina Weber, who is still on scene. And three former presidents will celebrate the life of Congressman John Lewis at his funeral today. We'll hear more about the civil rights icons um, celebration in Atlanta. Trouble barges in on a woman and her son here on the west side. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. Both of them were shot during what police described as a home invasion. I'll have that story. 
Today, a civil rights icon will be laid to rest. We'll tell you everything you need to know about Congressman John Lewis's funeral services in Atlanta, Georgia. And that is a picture out of Cape Canaveral where NASA is getting ready to launch a rover to Mars in about 20 minutes. It will travel 65 million miles for about seven months to get to the red planet. And we'll keep tabs on that launch in this half hour. Good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is July 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Morning commute's been pretty smooth so far overall. What's the latest, Nick? Uh, you got time to put gas mark. Things are looking good out All there. All right. Sounds yeah. good. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. It's not uh, anything, you know, where it hits you when you walk out the front door. I mean, there's some humidity out there, but not like what it was the past couple of days. And a beautiful view uh, looking with live cam right now and uh, maybe a little bit of haze kind of hanging over town. 76 degrees, normal low temperature, 75. So in the ballpark, of course, some low 70s out in portions of the uh, the hill country. Mold is way up there. If you started feeling the effects of that, it uh, well, the day before it was 2900 and then it really jumped up yesterday. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in uh, hopefully about an hour or so. And uh, throughout the rest of today, we're going to have partly cloudy skies. I don't think we can avoid it. Looks like triple digits for high temperatures today as well as tomorrow. And then uh, we will have a couple of uh, showers trying to move in here late tomorrow night. There is a disturbance which is going to be coming down from the northern part of the state as opposed to trying to come in from the Gulf. And that's going to touch off some showers and a few thunderstorms. And that's going to be, like I said, late tomorrow night, and especially the first part of the day on Saturday. And that's one of our best rain chances that we've seen in a long time and are going to see in a while. So keep your fingers crossed for Saturday. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic once again. And I mean, the map, there's nothing. It doesn't even look like there's any slow spots there. No, no slow spots. Looks good. You know, we get your little build up here and there, Mike. Right. But other than that, it's been a great morning traffic wise. If you're headed to work this morning, expect a smooth commute. Let's just take a look at these drive times here. 151 to 1604 to 90, only nine minutes right now, and uh, 90 eastbound from 1604 to 35, 10 minutes. Usually on a normal day, it's about 13 minutes each for both of those, so still you know, a little bit faster today. It's good. All right, Trans Guide, 10 at Frio, inbounds and outbounds looking great. Traffic is flowing smoothly. 10 west at 1604, the same. It looks great out there. And let's do one more 1604 and Tradesman on the northwest side looking amazing. All right, everyone, I hope you have a great day. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thanks, Nick. Police are still investigating a shooting of the 3200 block of West Salinas. That's on the west side near Martin and South Zarzamora. Our Katrina Weber has been on scene all morning. Good morning, Katrina. Any updates? Good morning. Well, the first thing you'll notice is that the police cars and crime scene tape that had been here earlier are gone. The police cleared out of here a little while ago, and as far as we know, they did not make any arrests. Now, this happened a little bit before 4.30. I want to show you the video from when they were here investigating on the scene. They told us that a 56-year-old woman and her 19-year-old son were both shot by two men who barged into their home earlier this morning. According to police, those men uh, yelled and screamed and then uh, shot the two people. The man, the son, was hit in the leg and chest. The mother hit in the leg, both taken to the hospital. Police called this a home invasion. They suspect that robbery could have had something to do with this, but they didn't know if anything was actually taken from the family. Uh, but they, and they also said that they had not made any arrests, although we did see a couple of people in handcuffs get taken away in police cars. But we'll have to wait till later on this morning to find out whether they will face any charges connected to this. Reporting live on the West Side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Former President Barack Obama will give the eulogy at Congressman John Lewis's funeral today. He will be one of three presidents to honor the late congressman, joined by Bill Clinton and George W. Bush. Lewis's funeral will be held at Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta this morning. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. famously served as a pastor for the church. Lewis was a friend of King's and a civil rights icon himself. It's the conclusion of six days of ceremonies to honor John Lewis. Seen as Daryl Forges has more from the church in Atlanta with more. The flag draped casket carrying John Lewis back in his home district of Atlanta for one final farewell. This prophet lived and this prophet named John Lewis loved. He was grounded in a deep belief that our worth was given by God not by man. The civil rights titan served the Atlanta district for more than three decades. Bernice King, 
daughter of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who referred to the late congressman as Uncle John, describes the last time she saw Lewis alive. I could tell when I looked in his eyes uh, that he um, had finished his course um, and that he had fought a good fight. King says out of all the ceremonies and moments from the past few days, Lewis's body being carried inside the Alabama State Capitol was a powerful spiritual moment. I thought about 55 years prior when uh, Governor uh, Wallace would not allow them um, access into the, into the Capitol. The focus now is on the home going for the boy from Troy. I'm sure that uh, every tribute uh, will be extremely powerful. Um, it will be a sad moment, though, because he does leave uh, a tremendous void. A void that will never be forgotten. We have to know that as we stand up for freedom, as we stand up for justice, that it will not be in vain, that it will reap benefits. In Atlanta, Georgia, I'm Daryl Forges. In your morning headlines, cleanup continues this morning after a natural gas explosion outside of Houston. The explosion happened yesterday evening in the city of Mont Bellevue, just east of Houston. A piece of machinery struck a liquid natural gas line at a Lone Star NGL facility. It caused a fire in the area. Firefighters have since put it out and there have been no injuries reported. The Trump administration says it will reject new DACA applications. It will also shorten renewal periods for the program that shields young people from deportation. Move follows a Supreme Court decision forcing the administration to keep the program last month. Legal battles are expected to continue over DACA. A federal judge in Maryland ruled the program should be restored to its original form. Ruth Bader Ginsburg is resting at a New York hospital after un undergoing a non-surgical procedure. The 87-year-old Supreme Court justice had a stent revised. A statement says stent revisions are common occurrences and Ginsburg is expected to be released from the hospital by the end of the week. This procedure is unrelated to her cancer, which she announced had returned two weeks ago. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi says everyone in Congress must wear masks starting today. Comes after Texas Congressman Louie Gohmert would refuse to wear a mask tested positive for COVID-19. Till now, representatives have been encouraged to wear masks in the chamber and only required to wear them in committee rooms. Some Republican representatives are criticizing the move. However, the Speaker of the House has the authority to have the Sergeant at Arms kick out anyone who does not follow the rule. U.S. Senator Joe Manchin and American Postal Workers Union officials say post office locations around the country could close. The senator says he received reports and concerns about closures in his home state of West Virginia that prompted him to ask Postmaster General Luis DeJoy, who outlined eliminating overtime in some locations. The APW says the measures could potentially cause delays in mail services and could impact mail and voting in November. President Donald Trump being criticized for some comments he made about affordable housing and the suburbs. He made the comments while discussing a federal housing rule aimed at fighting racial discrimination. The president says he rescinded the rule earlier this week. Critics say the president is stoking racial division with an appeal to white suburban voters before the election. One of those critics is former housing secretary and former San Antonio mayor Julian Castro. These guys come in a couple of years later and they put it on ice and say, no, no, right. uh, we're going to go backward to take us back to 1950 or choose your year when people could still be discriminated against because of the color of their skin. If elected, former Vice President Joe Biden has promised to reinstate the fair housing rule, which is included in his campaign housing plan. It is 638 and 76 degrees. A local company using innovation to help people get through the pandemic safely. After the break, we'll take a look at a contract free, rather contact free temperature scanner that the company is manufacturing. Just about 642 businesses and schools, of course, making changes to adapt to the COVID-19 pandemic. And one San Antonio company is offering thermal scanners that make temperature checks contact free. Eric Hernandez gives us a look at the device and how it works. This school year will be very different. Coronavirus has forced districts to change how things are done and figure out ways to make sure students and staff remain safe. Boda Vida Academy on the south side is turning to new technology from San Antonio company Documation. We all in the same boat in terms of uh, uh, making sure that we have all the uh, procedures in place to detect and protect not only ourselves, but our kids. Documation is an IT software and print service company that has shifted what it does to create a hands-free thermal scanner. 
we, uh, being a technology company and being innovative, looked at this technology and saw the fit that it really would align to our needs. And then we saw uh, us having the ability to start offering this as well to uh, so many of our own clients and then beyond that as well. So how does it work? The device sits on a stand and a person walks up to it and through facial recognition, a thermal scan is done to check your temperature in less than a second with 98.3% accuracy. And then uh, even if uh, you don't have a face covering on or a face mask, it'll alert you and tell you that you're not wearing one. So there's kind of the two uh, prong approach that it has. Documation has since donated a scanner to Puerto Vida Academy to have in place when staff and students return. The device will work wonders for us because it will allow us to detect and protect uh, our students, faculty and staff, and even uh, uh, the parents that are coming to us to register. Documation continues to make the device and recently donated one to a local nonprofit, and the city of Pleasanton has purchased some to station around town. For more on this device, just head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. 644 overwhelming. That's how many parents describe having to make a decision about whether their child will return to in-person learning. The whole thing is, is overwhelming um, to me because it's you have to make this this decision that impacts not only the health and safety of your own child, but your home and in all reality, the teacher's home. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, this isn't just about my child. This is about every other child in that classroom. Brandy Albert has a seven month old baby girl and a daughter going into second grade. The concern for her is very real. Right now on KSAT.com and the KSAT TV app, hear more about parents' concerns as they, as they prepare for the new school year. It's the latest episode of KSAT Explains Back to School During a Pandemic. Let's check on traffic with Officer Nick Solis. Yeah, good news for everyone. Things are looking good outside right now in the city. Uh, no traffic accidents to report. If, you're, if you are headed to work, expect a smooth ride, and that's always good news. Let's take a look at the Trans Guide. 281 and 410 near the airport. Look at that. It just looks great. Traffic flowing uh, smoothly all over the place. 281 and Grace in the same. Uh, and uh, 1604 in Claiborne, Alamo Ranch. Look at that. That 151 flyover is looking great as well. All right, real quick, before we get to Mike's full weather, we want to take a sneak peek at where it's 4 minutes, 40 seconds from the launch of the Mars rover Perseverance. You're looking live at Cape Canaveral, and if we time this out right, we will show you the launch in its entirety coming up after Mike's full forecast. Okay, then let's get to the uh, this case at Connect picture, first of all. And until I read the caption, I had no idea this was Woodlawn Lake. Wow. Oh. Yeah, that's stunning. Yeah. Looks like Mars. <laughs> I like that theme. It is, but wow, that's just fantastic. Thank you very much for that picture. Uh, obviously, we've seen a few bright spots out there. Some of the uh, low clouds hanging around here right now. 76 degrees, normal low 75. So, again, we're in the ballpark of where we should be. Uh, of course, yesterday we had that gust run to so those outflow boundaries, as we call them, uh, when you get these big storms and all the, the winds from aloft in the atmosphere hit the ground and spread out. And that's what why things got so blustery in the afternoon knocked temperatures down about 10 15 degrees but right prior to that we were up to 97 and that's one of the reasons why we're going to be up close to triple digits later on today but anyway as far as rainfall totals yesterday of course most of the rain was down there along the coastal plain hardly anything on the north and northwest side of 35 and out at the airport zilch trace of rain officially. Most of it was just in the half inch to maybe an inch category. Uh, you may have gotten a little bit of free lawn watering, which is fantastic, but you know, well, anything is great, but we could use a lot more. And unfortunately, there's nothing in the offing, nothing showing up on radar even as of right now. And that's what the computer models are indicating as well throughout the rest of the morning. Obviously, even by noon, we're not going to have anything out there, nor will we see anything trying to develop even later on this afternoon. And that's or going into dinner time. And that's because the disturbance which gave us this rain has moved well off to the southwest and it's going to continue to just sort of fall apart. And we're going to be dominated by high pressure, one in the Gulf, one 
one off to the west. That's really the dominant one off to the west of us. And that's what's going to keep us in this kind of northerly flow. There's actually a front. And before you get excited about using the word front, it's not coming through here. We're not going to have any cooler temperatures, anything like that. But this northerly flow is going to push that down just close enough to us to where it's going to be sort of the focal point for and the triggering mechanism for some showers and a few thunderstorms, maybe starting by dinner time tomorrow night, but especially in the overnight hours, we'll start to see a few more of those showers and thunderstorms uh, developing, and that's going to be throughout basically the first part of the day on Saturday is going to be the best chance for some rain. 30, 40 percent chance for rain. So some of the best chances we've had in a while and best chance we're going to have for a while. 90 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today up to 100 with partly cloudy skies. And by the way, if we don't get any rain today nor tomorrow, it doesn't look like it. This would go down as the driest month we've had in about five years around here. Only nine hundredths of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport. 100 today as well as tomorrow, maybe a couple of showers late tomorrow and then first part of the day on Saturday. And, and then a few lingering ones throughout the day on Saturday. And it looks like we're going to be back to some triple digits by late next week or by the mid middle part of next week. Pardon me. All right, my perfect timing. Thank you. We're about a minute away from launch of the Mars rover right now. It is 648 76 degrees. Well, it's no secret. Students need to go to school every day when healthy. Join us tomorrow on GMSA where we look at a research research showing just how impactful missing a day of school can be. All right, let's go live now to Florida Cape Canaveral. Mike, please stay with us here as we take a live look at the countdown to Mars. We are 52 seconds away from the launch of the Mars rover Perseverance. And Sarah, you had a chance to talk to a NASA engineer yesterday about this mission and how important it is to our space program. It's extremely important because this is just another step that they're going to take before, you know, humans can eventually make a trip to Mars. It's going to that rover is going to be collecting evidence to prove that there was life on Mars. They say that there used to be oceans and rivers on Mars it's going to travel 65 million miles. Uh, let's go ahead and listen in to launch seconds. control right Static now shot. as we are now so 20 Atlas. seconds away from the launch of Perseverance. So Mars 2020. Should be at 10 seconds now. 5 seconds. Eight. Oh, seven. Nine. Five. Zero. Release. And we are off. And Mike, I think you'll agree it's a pretty good looking day for a launch there in South Florida. Oh, yes, indeed. And yeah, anytime whatever is launched there, be it a manned vehicle and or LFTU something has like gone this, to close loop it's control. always just just exciting. It's, it's, it makes you feel like a little kid again, just watching. Kind of does. Yeah. You know? and, and I'm glad they're off the path. Coming it looks like the launch has been the successful. The if they didn't launch today, they only had control. until August 15th. That window was pretty narrow yeah, to get uh, this vehicle five, headed control. in the right position towards Cause, Mars. Because you got to have the two planets lined up. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be the start. It is the start of what, a seven month journey, I believe. Well, well, a six to six to seven months. Scheduled to land February 18th of next year. Year. And the rover will be on Mars for about a year, and then the NASA engineer explaining that it will just kind of naturally disintegrate. But um, it's going to be collecting evidence, and that evidence from Mars hopefully will make it back to Earth in future years. Well, Mars Perseverance is now on its and way. Again, looking live at the successful launch. You're watching GMSA, and we will be right back. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the COVID-19 emergency now colliding with hurricane season. The record-breaking tropical storm ECAS is now barreling through the Caribbean. Florida to the northeast on high alert. We are tracking the very latest. That plus much more coming up only on GMA. We'll see you soon. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, universities don't want their students dropping out due to lack of income caused by COVID-19. That's why Alamo Colleges is encouraging people enrolled at any of their campuses to apply to their student impact fund. The money can be used to cover groceries, rent, or even a car payment. Our Alicia Barretta spoke with a beneficiary who was close to losing her home due to loss of income. Her story coming up at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's go straight to Officer Nick Solis. Nick. Yeah, Mark, working on one accident here on the northwest side. It's going to be a major accident at Braun Road and West Loop 1604 North. It's going to be at the intersection of the eastbound access road of 1604. Looks like a two-vehicle accident. Hope everyone's okay there. Mike? 
Japan. Look at the uh, beautiful sunrise this morning. Just a couple of clouds hanging around here. Temperature is at 76 degrees and uh, we're going to be up to 100 today as well as tomorrow. Maybe some rain chances then coming in here by uh, late tomorrow night and into Saturday. And I know we're going to take a shot of the uh, launch is now, but also a big weekend for NASA because Dragon X crew is supposed to return on Sunday. Right now you're looking live at the uh, vehicle that's taking Mars Perseverance on its way to the red planet. You see we've already shed it looks like initial stage of the rocket and that's one of those big booster nozzles right there. We also saw, looked like we saw some positioning boosters firing of those other boosters there. But do you see the curve of the Earth there in the so background? It's beautiful. I yeah. love seeing that shot. And what's also cool about this is not only is it a rover, but it's taking a drone with it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ingenuity, the helicopter. First. First helicopter to fly on another planet. Thanks for watching and joining along on this mission with us. We'll see you back here at 9.